Thanks, and uh, I wanted to thank the organizers again for giving me a chance to talk and for organizing this conference. Uh, so I'm just going to do a brief outline first of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so first, I'm going to talk a bit of just give a definition of what a total relatively hyperbolic group is and give some, talk about some properties of them. Um, next, I'm going to talk about splittings of groups for those who are unfamiliar with uh, this, these ideas, but I'm, but I hope that it should seem pretty uh, familiar to everyone. Uh, then I'm going to talk about a certain a uh, couple of important types of splittings, which are uh, which show up in my work, and that are necessary to define what a what the structure of a floor in a tower is. And then I'm going to uh, talk about how we find floors using pre-retractions and how we find pre-retractions using first-order logic. Um, I'm not a logician, so I, and so I have like a little short introduction to some first-order logic for this talk. And then I'm going to talk about what I've uh, recently proved. So uh, a group G is a finitely, uh, is, so uh, what I'm going to say is let X be the, uh, be the Cayley graph of a finitely generated group and let P be a collection of finitely generated subgroups. We construct the coned off Cayley graph, X tilde, by joining a, a unique cone point for each distinct left coset of an element of P and each vertex of that coset in X. And we make both x and x tilde into metric spaces by giving all like uh, edges length one. Now recall that a geodesic metric space is delta hyperbolic if there exists a delta greater than or equal to zero. So that for any geodesic triangle, one side of the geodesic triangle or any side of the geodesic triangle is within a delta neighborhood of the other two sides. So this is the the thin or slim triangles. I don't know which one it is. There's a couple different ways to call it, and, and they mean different things, but they really mean the same thing. But uh, Ideas: those triangles look skinny in these sorts of spaces. A finally generated group G is a hyperbolic group if the Cayley graph is a delta hyperbolic metric space. And similarly, a finally generated group is hyperbolic relative to a collection of finally generated subgroups if the, if the corresponding coned off Cayley graph is a delta hyperbolic space. And we have this other condition that each edge, um, for each edge and for each n, there are only finitely many embedded loops of that le of length n containing E. This is sometimes known as the bounded coset penetration property. Um, what, um, what this does is you know, one thing that you might know that you might recall um, if you've done sort of any uh, metric, any hyperbolic metric geometry before is that these, that uh, higher rank abelian groups like rank two and above are not higher rank free abelian groups. That is are not hyperbolic. There's the, you can't get thin triangles in there, but the idea is that if you put, if you put a cone point above these, above the, above these uh, cosets of these very flat looking parts of your Cayley graph, it makes those, the distances within those cosets smaller. Because the idea is that you can, that between any two points inside there, you could go up to the cone point and then go down. So, so they're inside that coset, the maximal distance between any two points is two. So this makes all of our sort of big flat subgroups uh, small. And so we could, Think about hyperbolicity relative to that. So a toral relatively hyperbolic group is a torsion-free group, which is hyperbolic relative to the conjugacy representatives of its maximal non-cyclic abelian subgroups. So some I think the thing to state right here is, is why you might have seen something like this before. These are these things arise in the wild in mathematics as the fundamental groups of hyperbolic manifolds with, with cor torus, cusp, cross section. So the idea is that this is a manifold, which is hyperbolic, but it has a boundary component that looks like a Torus, right? Um, Torsion-free hyperbolic groups are, are TRH relative to the tri trivial subgroup. TRH groups are CSA or conjugate separated abelian, which means that if you have a maximal abelian subgroup, it intersects its conjugates trivially. And TRH groups have JSJ splittings, which I'm which I use in my research. I'm going to talk a little bit about what those are after briefly discussing what's sort of the idea of splittings and graphs of groups. So the first, there are two basic splittings that all other splittings are based off of. The first one is the amalgamated free product. And the other one is the H and N extension. So the amalgamated free product you, you're all familiar with. This is the Van Kampen's theorem thing, right? You, where you can, where if you take two spaces and attach them along a subspace, the fundamental group is an, the amalgamated free product of those two, of the two individual groups over the uh, group of the subspace. The H, an H and N extension is similar where it's sort of like 
where we take a subspace and we attach it to another copy of itself using a, using a, using a torus, which is why we get, uh, get this extra generator for the fundamental group T because we're adding in a handle. So H and N extensions are like adding handles. Um, amalgamated free products are like gluing two spaces together. Um, if a group can be expressed as an amalgamated free product or an H and N extension, this is known as a one edge splitting. And this is um, sort of, this sort is a leading uh, definite, a leading uh, terminology because it, more generally splittings are defined, are represented in terms of graphs of groups. So if you have a finite group and you have a, and you have, and you can assign, and you assign a, a group to each vertex and each edge so that the edge groups in, inject into the, uh, into the, its endpoint groups, uh, we can construct a graph of groups decomposition. So for example, if I have it, this one edge graph, U and V joined by E, they're fundam the, fun the pi one of this, this is the, the fundamental group of this graph of groups would be the U vertex group amalgamated with the GV group, vertex group over GE. And similarly, for, if we have a loop like this, we do uh, an H and N extension. And more generally for larger graphs, um, the pi one of lambda will be constructed inductively via, by a series of amalgamated free products and H and N extensions. So given a group, we can actually recover how split, we can recover splittings of that group by studying how it acts on trees. And it's by studying these actions on trees, there's been a lot of um, interesting work into sort of trying to find a canonical splitting for a group. And this led to the theory of JSJ splittings. So for any finitely generated group G, there exists a JSJ splitting, which is up to some equivalence maximal with respect to all splittings of G. And it's also invariant under the automorphisms. JSJ splittings, I like to think of them as like molecular diagrams for groups because they classify the vertex groups into a few classes. And one of the most important classes among them are surface type vertex groups. What that means is that you have some vertex in our graph of groups such that it, the corresponding uh, vertex group for that vertex is pi one of a compact surface. And there's a bijective correspondence between the boundary curves and the edges coming out of that, that vertex so that the edge group there is equal to pi one of that curve, that boundary curve. And I'm gonna have a picture of what, this, what one of these would look like on the next page. Um, I just wanna say that, cause I'm only dealing with things with negative uh, Euler characteristic, the things of Euler characteristic negative one that don't have pseudo and Ossov diffeomorphism are referred to later on as it being exceptional and the other surfaces of negative Euler characteristic are non-exceptional. Um, so this is a picture of what a, what a uh, vertex type sorry, a surface type vertex would look like. So this is the way you think about it is that we have the fundamental group of a surface and we've just attached using, H &N, using, um, using amalgamated free products and H&N extensions, this surface to some other space, which is, which is a KG1 of, of what, or in this case, a KB11 of this, right? So we have some other space down here with the fundamental group of this lower vertex. So uh, the, um, in order to define what a tower is, I need to define what a centered splitting is. So a centered splitting has a single, has a single, well, just one surface type vertex and all the edges are Z and they all join that, vert, that surface type vertex to some other ver vertex. Um, yeah, so all the edges come out of V. Um, now the interesting, the reason why these the surface type vert vertices are actually really interesting and give us some interesting things because um, it turns out that we can find often find ways to retract this this entire thing down onto the lower subgroups, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. So, if we have a uh, if Q is the fundamental group of a compact surface and it's the it's a subgroup of G, we call a we call P from Q to G a boundary preserving map with values in G. I'm going to explain the why I chose this later, it's kind of a joke, why I chose this notation here. But um, so it, we, it's a boundary preserving map if it restricts the conjugation by an element of G on each boundary subgroup of the surface group. The map is non-degenerate if the image is not abelian, P is not an isomorphism onto one of the conjugates and um, the surface is non-exceptional. 
And we similarly can define the same sort of thing if we have a if we have a surface type vertex in a splitting of some other subgroup of G. Now, the reason why these, are, these boundary preserving maps are interesting is because they allow us to, like I said, collapse down this, this uh, space that we've constructed to represent our group onto the lower parts of it. So if lambda is a non-exceptional centered splitting of a finally generated torsion-free group A with central vertex subgroup Q and, and lower or exterior vertex subgroup B1, we can, there, there exists a non-degenerate boundary preserving map from Q to A, if and only if um, we're able to find these nice retractions as stated in, in this uh, proposition due to Girardel, Levit, and Sklinos. So this, uh, this sort of idea of being able to retract your splitting leads into the definition of what a retractable splitting is. So I think the more important important thing for our purposes is that a centered splitting is retractable if and only if it satisfies any of the equivalent uh, conditions of the previous proposition. So that means that we can find a, that there's a boundary preserving map on the, surf, on the surface of our cent centered splitting that um, allows us to retract the group down onto the, lower onto the lower group. So now we can finally define a floor. So a floor is a so G is a floor over, over subgroup H if either G is a free pro product of, a, of H with Z or if G has a retractable centered splitting with whose base, which is the, this is the base right here, this abstract free product of the conjugates of the, of the bottom groups. It's a retractable splitting. If we have a retractable centered splitting with base isomorphic to H and a group is a tower if we can if we can describe it as a series of floors, right? So um, how do we find floors and towers? Well, we actually find them with what are called pre-retractions. So these pre-retractions allow us to find the retractions we need in order to uh, define the floor. So pre-retractions, so pre I mean, I don't have so much time and I wanna be able to get to the first order logic stuff. Pre-retractions basically, um, they diff, they differ from the identity, their map that differs from the identity map by conjugating on ver in, a in a nice way on vertex and edge groups. So we say that two morphisms from A to G are lambda related if, we, if they differ by um, an inner automorphism on all edge groups, if they differ by an inner automorphism on all non-surface type or accession exceptional surface type vertex groups and if um, it acts if it acts really as a boundary preserving map on all the uh, exceptional on the, all the non-exceptional vertex groups and the reason why we want to find a pre-retraction is because this allows us to find a uh, retractable splitting which then allows us to find a, f a floor and then a tower so if you have an, an abelian splitting of a group a which uh, abelian splitting meaning that all the edge groups are abelian, um, then and every edge carries one abelian vertex and one non-abelian vertex, and the corresponding vast stair tree of the splitting is one acylindrical near the vertices. Um, if there exists a non-injective pre-retraction uh, with respect to lambda, then that splitting is actually retractable in A. And this is actually where I got the idea for the the uh, using that notation because I when I thought about it it was kind of like I was imagining the pre retraction sort of breaking the top floors off your tower so you're just breaking these surface pieces off the top and I got was I had come across this tarot card of the tower and I was working on this and I thought it was a pretty funny coincidence so I went with that so now now I need to talk a little bit about first order logic in the remaining two minutes I have um, basically. Uh, if you, we're interested in whether a group, whether a, like a logical statement is, is valid over a given group, right? So for example, the statement G, uh, the commutator of G and H is equal to one if and only if G and H can commute in G and G and the sentence for all X and Y commutators equal to one is valid if and only if your group is abelian. Um, similar to this, uh, related to this is the idea of an elementary theory. So it's the set of all sentence, sentences satisfied by your group. Um, there was an important uh, problem called Tarski's problem, 
Tarski first stated this in 1945, and it was proved in 2006 independently by Salah and Karlampovich Miesnikov. He showed that all finitely generated non abelian free groups have the same first order theory. Um, he actually went on to show that being hyperbolic is, uh, is a, Salah and later uh, Simon Andre went on to show that being hyperbolic is actually a first order invariant. So the first order theory of a group is enough to detect the, the sorry, the logic of a group. Yeah, the first order logic of a group is enough to detect hyperbolicity, which is a geometric thing, which is pretty crazy. So uh, an elementary embedding is, um, says that when it's a bit stronger than being uh, ele elementarily equivalent, so that is having the same elementary theory, it's that you have a sub, a sub uh, group so that for any first order formula and any tuple of elements in H, it's that uh, that formula with the assignment of those that tuple is valid in H if and only if it's valid in G. So in particular, they have the same first order theory. Um, in 2011, Chloe Perron proved that that if G is a torsion-free hyperbolic group and H is el elementarily embedding embedded, then G has a structure of a hyperbolic tower over H. Um, why this is actually important is because what Salah did, which was the really hard part of what he did, is the uh, was the converse. Is that if you have, if G is a torsion-free hyperbolic group and G and H are torsion-free hyperbolic groups, and if G is a simple floor over H, then H is elementarily embedded in G, which is a really hard thing and um, and hasn't been proved in more general cases. But what I worked on recently was was generalizing Perron's result to uh, toral relatively hyperbolic groups. And just briefly, I'm not going to go into any details of how, how the proof how the proof worked, but the difficult part of it was were the following. Um, you've showed that when you have a if you could find a that when you have a elementarily embedded subgroup, you can find pre-retractions. And so yeah, it's very hard to actually do. And if I'd I'd be happy to talk about the details later during the geometric group theory session. But um, that's it for now. <laughs>